Hey, what's going on, Nerfurters? Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Today, it is time for another Blu-ray collection update video, and I'm going to jump right into this. As always, first one we got here is Hereditary, and uh, this film, to me, is a perfect film, and this seems to be such a polarizing film. It's either got, like, that classic appeal for everybody, and it's like a top dog horror film where people think it's just a flaming pile of shit. I don't understand the people that do not like this film. The only thing about this movie that I could understand why people don't like it is that it is a slow burn and it's a lot of psychological horror and uh, if you can't get out of your head and into the movie, I could see where people did not enjoy this. If you like your horror just thrown at you and just, you know, a lot going on to keep you entranced into the film, then I could get why this doesn't appeal, but this story to me was pitch perfect. This is true horror right here. And not only is it about, you know, the spiritual elements in this movie, but just watching this family crumble from the inside out. It, there's just so, so much good stuff in this movie, man. I can't recommend this movie enough. This is easily one of the top horror films for me in a long time. To me, this is a classic. This is one of those movies that's going to stand the test of time. It, it's our generation's exorcist, dude. I, I said it. It is for me. Fucking love this movie, man. Love it. Next, we've got The Beyond. And this is a really nice release here. I like this a lot. This actually uh, came with the soundtrack for the film here as well, which I thought was pretty cool. The, the score in this movie is fantastic. I absolutely loved it. The main theme in this film is uh, very entrancing. It just kind of sucks you in because it's just one of those things, man. It's like Ted Nugent's Stranglehold. You just let that bass let go and go and go. You listen to it forever. It's kind of one of those things that just repeats and repeats and repeats, but it just sucks you in more and more uh, the more you're listening to it. It's a really cool case, though. This is all embossed here. This is a glow-in-the-dark case as well. And this was my introduction to, um, I don't know if the right way to pronounce this dude's name. I don't know if it's Lucio Fulci or Lucio Fulci. Um, probably should have listened to someone say his name before doing the video, I guess. But um, nevertheless, this is my introduction to his films. I don't recall seeing any of his movies the only thing that I have seen bits and pieces of is the zombie movie that he did um, because there's so much footage of that that's kind of floating around online and, of course, like the infamous zombie shark scene and all that. But uh, this was like my first introduction, and it, it's an interesting film. I, I did enjoy it. I very much did. I can see why this movie is polarizing, though. It, it seems like his films are very polarizing for people. People think, you know, it's, again, it's a lot of people say it's like cult film and uh, just one of the best horror directors out there, and a lot of other people that say all of his films are complete dog shit. And this is a situation where I could understand 100% the argument either which way, because there's things in here that either really work for you or they really don't. And this movie did work for me. I, I did really enjoy this a lot. Um, looking forward to some of his other films. I also picked up Don't Torture a Duckling, so I'll talk about that, hopefully in an upcoming video once I get around to watching that. Next up here, we got Annihilation. And uh, this film, very good. This is the follow-up to Ex Machina, um, Alex Garland. I enjoyed this movie. Um, Natalie Portman was great in this here. Uh, you know, it's just something about this that made me think a lot more after the movie ended. And I had to watch some other videos to get some other people's interpretations of this just so I could try to make up my own. And I had some ideas with things, but this, this is a thinking kind of a movie. Executed well. I think Alex Garland is uh, phenomenal and has a you know insanely bright future ahead. It's just Ex Machina to me is one of the greatest films ever made for sure. And to top that, very difficult. This is a good film though. I, I did enjoy it. I need to get a second viewing on this though because after watching some theory videos, I want to try to connect some of those dots with everything because I think it is a little bit deeper than what first meets the eye. But still entertaining. Next here, we've got Mandy, and this is exactly what you want from a Nicolas Cage film. This is Nicolas Cage at his best. This is a trippy movie. I I'm Just straight up, a very trippy movie. I enjoyed this a lot because I can get into an artsy film, and, you know, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. This one here sucked me right in. Um, super slow burn to get to the, the meat of everything, and... If I did drugs, I would probably do drugs and watch this because it, it's one of those kinds of movies. But it, it was super fun. I love Nicolas Cage in this. This was right up his alley, and I would definitely recommend this, especially if you're into artistic -y kind of films. This is one that I would definitely recommend checking out. Next up here, we got the or latest, newest Puppet Master movie, The Littlest Reich. And this was pretty good. Um, it definitely felt very low budget, and that's kind of what you get from Full Moon and stuff. But uh, this movie here, I, I, I love the Puppet Master films. I, I 
love like one through five. I think four and five are the ones that were kind of back to back where they're fighting like the, the devil and his little minion kind of things or whatever. But um, this one here kind of takes it back to just like straight up just horror elements. And it is a little bit goofy at times with stuff, but they marketed this based around like the gore and the kills and everything. And they don't disappoint. It's There's definitely some pretty badass kills in this and lots of gore to go around. But I had a lot of fun with this. I thought this was... Uh, a solid Puppet Master film, and uh, I, I honestly, I can't wait to see what they keep doing with this here. Hopefully they continue making more Puppet Master movies. Seems like it's never going to stop, they've been making them forever, but this was a good one. Tales from the Hood 2. Uh, this was okay. Uh, the first segment in this, I liked a lot, and there, there are some callbacks here and there to the first Tales from the Hood, which I liked. I feel like you kind of needed to do that with this because it's been so long. So the people that are going to go see this are the people that, you know, grew up loving the first Tales from the Hood. I don't know if this movie is going to attract, like, a new audience or not because it's it's not the best. I think this is more nostalgia for folks that, you know, grew up loving Tales from the Hood. I enjoyed it for what it was. Wasn't the best, though. Um, the first segment in this, like I said, was definitely my favorite. That was the one that felt the most unique. Um, felt like there was the most care put into it. Felt the, the best budget-wise and everything. Um, not bad. And the ending to this was really cool, too, because it was a, a total homage to the first Tales from the Hood. But Keith David, super fun in this, man. That Keith David was just a cool dude. So he, uh, he kind of brought that home. Next up here, we've got the uh, Kane Hodder uh, documentary biography story to Helen Back. This was cool. This A lot of the stuff in here, if you have read his book Unmasked, this is almost just kind of taking uh, segments of what's in the book and putting it into a, you know, a Blu-ray here. I loved his book. I thought his book was fantastic, and I, I really enjoyed this too. The book, of course, goes into way more depth with certain situations and really kind of dives in there more. But uh, I, I would definitely recommend this. If you're a Kane Hodder fan or, you know, Friday the 13th or Hatchet, you know, definitely check this out. And even beyond this, I would definitely recommend reading his book, Unmasked. It is a phenomenal book and really dives in deep. And he talks about a lot of things that I, I don't think you would expect Kane Hodder to get into. So he, he really lets it all out. And they do talk about a lot in here, too. This was a, a good watch, for sure. Next up here, we have got a steel book, and that is The Nightmare Before Christmas. And I had to grab this. Nightmare Before Christmas, it's been a cult film like since the day it came out. But when this first came out, me and my brother used to watch this every single day on VHS. Just, like, burned it out. And uh, just it's one of those movies that's always going to have a special place for me. Like, no matter what. I don't care how marketed it is now and how much it's just become a part of pop culture and everybody's got to be a part of it. it. None of that matters to me. I could give two shits about how big this movie has become. I have a special place in my heart for this because this is one of those movies that just hit me as a kid and I've watched this more times than I can remember. The Steelbook is super cool. I had to double dip on this because my first Blu-ray I actually ever bought was A Nightmare Before Christmas. It's, eh, it's back here somewhere. But that was my first Blu-ray when they released the uh, initial Blu-ray release for this. And I had to grab this one here. I really liked it a lot. This is Glow in the Dark too, which is super cool. This is all embossed here with Jack Skellington. And they got Sally on the back. But uh, just a phenomenal movie. I know they're talking about the sequel thing and everything. And, I mean, they're going to try to make money wherever they can. I don't care, man. That movie, that's, that's as good as filmmaking gets right there. It's so cool. Uh, next, we got Predator. And I had to grab this steelbook. I've got the Predator Blu-ray. I honestly didn't even check. I still don't even know if this is a new transfer or not. Uh, I had to grab the Steelbook, though. Plus, it came with movie money, dude. It was like 10 bucks for the Steelbook with 8 bucks to go see the new Predator, which sucked ass, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I had to grab the Steelbook. I love this. They got the Predator and Arnie on the front there, and I love that artwork on the back. Um, absolutely love the Steelbook. This is super cool. I've been waiting for a cool release for Predator, and it finally came around. So, stoked on that. And uh, next up here, we've got another awesome Steelbook. That is for Hocus Pocus. And this is another one I had to double dip on just because this steel book is so freaking awesome, dude. It's, you know, you got the book of spells here and everything's embossed on the front. The eye, the snake up here. Um, love this, man. It's just a really cool release, you know. Um, a lot of steel books don't have this much, what's the word I'm looking for here, this much attention to detail put into it. Um, it's embossed, it's glossy, it's shined here. I, I think this is a gorgeous steel book. For a movie that's like a catalog title that's been out for a while, to get a cool steelbook release like this, I was really excited about. Um, normally they just try to throw you know a steelbook out there with some crappy artwork because people go crazy for steel. And this was actually a really thought out release. And Hocus Pocus is just such a fun Halloween time film. Um, you know, one of those ones you visit every October. So super stoked to grab that. 
Last but not least here, I just did a full unboxing for this too, so you can check that video out on my channel as well, but that's uh, the Target exclusive for Bohemian Rhapsody, and uh, I talked a bit about it on the unboxing there, so not much to say except just an awesome film. Really enjoyed this a lot, so uh, that's going to do it for today's video though, guys. I, uh, again, appreciate all the support. As always, if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button, share the video around, leave me some comments down below. We'd love to know your thoughts on any of these movies, um, any of the releases, anything you guys want to talk about, man. Let's join the discussion down there. Again, thank you guys for watching. I will catch you all next time.